Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my mate Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a six-game slate here on Monday night to get your work week going in the NBA. We are taking a look at uh, in this one at a pretty fun matchup, I would say, the Lake Show and the Nuggets. Some pretty big numbers in this one to look at. Uh, also got another game video and our player props up for you, so make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. Also want you to head to thelines.com. Check out all the great written content, everything we're talking about here up there for you guys. And our odds finder tool is on there you can use that to go ahead and look at all the offerings from those u.s sports books make sure you're getting the best juice on all those bets you want to make this nba season nate let's get into the six game slate and then talk nuggies and lake show yeah first game is pelicans plus one at wizards no zion no beal on either side of that the other game we break down bucks minus one and a half at the knicks the total is 221 it's a little low despite the defensive prowess of both teams Bulls plus eight at Celtics, totals at 238. That's a pretty competitive line there either way. Spurs plus 11 at Memphis, also with a 238 total. The Magic plus six at the Kings. And then this game right now, Lakers plus 10, uh, total of 241 at Denver. The one thing that gives me pause about the Lakers' momentum is that this is the third game in four nights, and it's obviously a veteran-led team uh, with LeBron. Um and that they do tend to go over when they're on short rest and that they do tend to fail to cover on sh- on short rest but you know they're losing by 7 points per game this is a this is a big spread and and Denver is obviously really good just bludgeoning teams uh with incredible offensive efficiency lately uh but for some reason this has not been the best matchup for them i mean Part of that being that sometimes Anthony Davis has been out there to guard Jokic, uh, but they did lose the Lakers in in this. They've won 12 of their last 15. One of those losses is the Lakers. AD actually tapped out of that game with an injury, uh, so it's not all him. It To me, the reason I think the Lakers are going to be able to hang is that Denver, as good as they are in some areas, they've given up like 60 paint points in three straight uh home wins and and that's even when they've like handled the clippers handled the celtics you know they're still allowing those teams to kind of waltz into the paint and match efficiency um that's not to say that i like over at 241 i mean the lakers have a reputation for going over these types of things and both these teams love to fast break and score in transition but i lean a little bit to the under um Because, I mean, the Nuggets, like I said, you know, some of the weirdness of this matchup and the Nuggets recently at home playing at just a 95 pace in their last three in those matchups I mentioned, 108 defensive rating. Uh, the Lakers, because of the rest situation, they could go cold and then and then just completely shut it down. And those those last four matchups I talk about, when they were in L.A., they were they were definitely up and down shootouts the one earlier this season in Denver, I mean, the, that was when the Lakers were started 0-4, couldn't really throw, uh, um, you know, water in a well, if you make up a phrase there. But they, they had 99 points. It was a 97 defensive rating for the Nuggets. And they, they, they seemed like they had a good recipe for slowing down LeBron, um, who is now, of course, on a ridiculous tear. So I think we both lean – towards the Lakers slowing it down a little bit, given this situation, uh, towards the Nuggets having a bit of offensive regression because there's nowhere to go but down after they've scored 126, you know, in, in their last 10, basically, Lakers as well. Uh, you know, it's scary to take an under, but I think the the, the idea of the game theory is if, if we lean towards the under, this being not a ridiculous high-scoring game, then we also lean towards the Lakers keeping staying within 10 points um, at, all the way down the stretch here. They won five straight, and they should at least be competitive, uh, you'd think, against the team that's that's uh, leading the West. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going under, the two, the two ways that happens is um, this is a, a bit of a closer, choppier game. Um, teams, both teams sort of maybe – being a little bit better uh, in their transition defense and getting back, uh, maybe being a, a little bit better in the paint. I mean, the, the the Lakers have definitely been really, really good in the paint in their last five or so. Um, 
The other way, though, that this becomes uh, an under is if the Nuggets do, in fact, blow out the Lakers and the Lakers just don't come along for the ride. And then we just don't really care about this one by the middle of the third quarter. But I don't see that happening either, because we've been talking about the the matchup, you know, in, in the last roughly like four times that these guys have played. And yeah, like you said, I mean, the, the Lakers pulled one of those out. Um, and really, when when they've had a D, um, even in that, that game that they had him only for, what, 17 minutes before he got hurt, um, it, it was, you know, when Thomas Bryant came in, he was, you know, doing a lot of the let's go down into the paint and play really well in you know around the block and and that's what AD was doing as well he wasn't playing that outside game in that first those first roughly 20 minutes and in that streak of games right he was playing that way that's why Thomas Bryant has been such a serviceable substitute at like 19 and a half a game and 12 boards right so that that's a, a huge plus that they didn't really have when they didn't have AD last year uh to the same degree so um I think that that's obviously crucial when you're talking about Joker, you're not going to stop Joker. I, I didn't think it was possible for him to get better, but I think he's better this year than he was last year. Um, mostly because of the fact that, you know, playoff Joker has been like, I'll just score. You want me to score? I'll score. Like, I'll just stop passing as much and score. Um, and he's not necessarily passing less, but he's definitely just been like, I'll keep scoring. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I'm hitting 12 to 15 field goals a game. Right. Which means I'm taking, I mean, honestly, for him, it means he could be taking anywhere from 18 to 20 because he's so freaking efficient right now. Um, and, and that's really what, you know, what has also helped for with that, um, the overs that they've been hitting uh, and the way that they've been scoring, like you said, like roughly like 122 a game or so. Um, and But at home, you know, if you look at their last roughly six, like we were talking about, not the paint points that they're giving up being a problem um it's also mostly just the way that you know that that pace has been so much slower and and i've we been watching a couple of those games where they lost to minnesota uh, after you know being really really tired but before that in all their games that they were you know winning uh it still came down to a lot of who's more efficient um, as their defensive rating has been so good. They're happy to sort of keep that pace a little bit slower uh, and play in the half court because they've been basically the best half court team on both sides of the ball in December when they're at home uh, with that 110 defensive rating, uh, the pace below 100 shooting at, you know, at the third most efficient pace basically with on and second in terms of how many assists they're getting. So everything's just this really efficient use as much of the clock as you want because everything is about ball spacing and passing uh, and cutting as well, which we've seen, uh, obviously, Bruce Brown being a huge beneficiary of that, uh, getting a bunch of uh, fast break points and points in the paint. So everything for them is very easy right now uh, because of the, the way that they're either passing and moving in the, in the half court or getting those transition points um, with, with some pretty big ease as well with guys like Bruce Brown uh, and Jamal Murray when he's in there, Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon. That's like an incredible you know selection of four guys to lead your fast break or be running upon it as well while Joker just kind of does his thing trudging up the court. Uh, so, you know, I, I like the efficiency Efficiency, but it also leads me to say, if you like this game to be a bit slower and you do like uh, the Lakers to probably be able to hang at least, I think they're going to be hanging in the first half. Um, I don't know necessarily what's going to be going on in that third quarter as the Nuggets have been such an incredible third quarter team uh, and have used that third quarter to pull away from their opponents over in December, uh, the best third quarter team as well in terms of net rating um, for a reason, right? And that, that's kind of what we've seen from really good teams in the last few years as well is who wins that third quarter and comes out and just crushes your soul. Um, so that's the only thing that, that keeps me from feeling as comfortable about the Lakers score uh, cover Covering, but because I don't expect them to get totally blown out uh, and that this game should be at least, you know, a little bit more of a, a competitive affair, I, I don't think it's going to be going at a fast pace considering the, the, you know, the pace of both these teams has been down for sure as of late and which has been leading to them winning. I don't think you change that recipe. Uh, so under 241 and a half feels pretty good. And maybe the Lakers, uh, I got to look at what that first half line is, but I'm basically all these numbers have kind of led me to be like, I don't know that they're going to be able to hang in that third and fourth, fourth quarter with the Nuggets, uh, but I do think there's something to be said for them covering in the first half yeah i think there's some circumstances that are leading to the nuggets being a little bit overvalued as minus 10 uh the number just being a little bit uncomfortably big i mean you look they won back-to-back -back home games here um but against cleveland resting donnie mitchell against the clippers pulling the plug on all their starters uh before that against the celtics who just can't who just don't show up in some road games right now um and then they haven't really been unbeatable in their previous two home games, Miami and Phoenix. And we know about Phoenix's struggles, but 
I, I, I mean, the Lakers are, are pretty much the, in, the opposite of the Clippers in terms of urgency right now. And that's why, like, I do think we trust them not to be like, right. okay, this is getting out of hand in the third. Like, we'll just move on to the next game. It's like, no, they're, they're selling out right now. This is our last stand. Yeah. <laughs> like, this five-game win streak is our stand to say, like, we actually have something. They're basically auditioning to the front office to say, we can be competitive if you want to actually trade those draft picks and give us one or two more players. Like maybe we can actually make a run here. And anytime they, they go out there and, and come out flat or LeBron specifically being like that guy who's like, you know, give me something here. Um, you know, he's not, he, there's no quitting him right now. And, and if he's not resting, he's out there giving you like 35, eight and eight um, on the routine here, 40 plus potentially. And with, with the Nuggets' struggles guarding the paint, uh, we do expect enough scoring from the Lakers to keep it close. So I, I, the total is tough to bet either way because uh, you just don't know about the pace yeah. and, and how much fast break opportunities are going to be, how, how, how quick Joker is going to dictate that pace. But I think either way, I don't think the Lakers uh, you know, completely fade away in this one. I think they, that they keep fighting uh, to the end. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it is a big disadvantage right now to also be out with uh, without uh, Lonnie Walker and Austin Reeves for them, which is, is part of what scares me. But they they definitely hung and, and kept things uh, in the last five. They've been playing, obviously, well uh, and closing things out super well as well. So it just it, it's kind of funny. Russ and, and LeBron, it's kind of like almost Russ's dream here that it's just like I get to just be used as much as possible. I don't even have to start. My usage is just going to be up by the 30 percent range the whole time. Same with LeBron. I'm also going to be able to get just all this all these minutes. So it's it's kind of fun for them, at, at least. And, and I think we can, can expect uh, them to at least bring it. Like I said, I feel very strongly they'll bring it in the first half and then we'll see what happens from there. But that is all the time that we have for you today. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us and until we see you next happy betting